On the 14th of February next year, the world's fourth most populated nation will conduct presidential elections. Indonesia will hold the world's largest single-day polls to elect its leader. Over 200 million eligible voters will cast their ballots. Incumbent President Joko Widodo is not eligible to run. That's because Indonesia's constitution does not allow more than two terms for presidents. Despite Widodo's high popularity, he has no other option but to sit this one out. So who will be contesting for the president's seat? And how important are Indonesia's presidential elections going to be for Southeast Asia and beyond? There are three candidates that are running for president. Ganjar Pranowo, Anis Baswedan and the latest entrant, Prabowo Subianto. Ganjar Pranowo is gaining popularity in Indonesia. He's the former governor of Central Java and a member of the ruling party, the Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle. Pranowo doesn't have a lot of experience with economic and foreign policies. However, he did make global headlines for refusing to host the Israeli team at the FIFA Under-19 Football World Cup. Because of Pranowo's stance, Indonesia were dropped as World Cup hosts and he suffered a fall in popularity among football fans, but became a poster boy for hardline Islamists. Pranowo has promised to cut taxes and attract foreign investors if he's elected. With a background in law, Pranowo has picked a former judge, Mahfoud Mohammed, as his running partner. The duo have pledged to digitize the legal and tax procedures in Indonesia. Next in line for the presidential throne is Anis Baswedan. A former academic, Baswedan officially joined politics in 2014. At that time, he joined forces with the current president, Joko Widodo. Baswedan has previously held the positions of Indonesia's education minister and the governor of the capital, Jakarta. Needless to say, he's dabbled quite a bit in politics and knows the ins and outs. So why did he decide to leave the coalition and run against Joko Widodo's party? It's because Baswedan disagrees with Widodo to shift the nation's capital from Jakarta to Nusantara. Baswedan calls the move to shift capitals Widodo's personal agenda. So he's working towards increasing his popularity and is trying to capture votes based on religion. He has chosen Muhaymin Iskandar, the leader of Indonesia's largest Islamic party, as his vice presidential candidate. Baswedan and Iskandar want to change the face of politics in Indonesia. The final and oldest candidate running for presidency is Prabowo Subianto, Indonesia's current defence minister, a close aide and ally of President Widodo. Subianto's political background goes back decades. He was politically active during the Suharto regime and he has even been accused of human rights abuses. And Subianto looks to use his close relationship with Widodo to full advantage. He calls the upcoming elections a turning point in Indonesia. I'm here to convey our determination to move forward with all of you and we ask for the blessing of the Indonesian people because we are facing a very important point in Indonesian history. In fact, a few weeks before Subianto decided to pick his vice presidential candidate, a court lowered the age for presidential candidates and their running partners. After that, Subianto made his move and picked President Widodo's oldest son as his vice presidential candidate. With the court's approval, a 36-year-old Gibran Raka Booming Raka now makes the cut. Subianto's move to rope in Widodo's son will attract his loyalists and young voters. Our duty is to continue and perfect programs related to youth, millennial, generation, Gen Z. The big political battle in Indonesia is all set. Subianto will face two former governors, Baswedan and Pranowo. And the presidential elections in February 2024 have implications for the region. Under President Joko Widodo, Indonesia moved closer to China in economic terms. But territorial disputes in the South China Sea have increased tensions between Jakarta and Beijing. Indonesia sits at the mouth of the Malacca Strait, 
a tiny passage strip that links the Indian Ocean to the South China Sea. China's trade and resources pass through the Malacca, and every time that China pushes Indonesia's buttons, other nations improve their ties with Jakarta. India is one of them. Indonesia and India have a historic relationship dating back centuries. Then there's Vietnam and the Philippines that are close allies with Indonesia. China has territorial disputes with them too. Thailand and Singapore are trusted allies of Jakarta. Clearly, Southeast Asia is united and supports Indonesia. Every time China tries to bully Indonesia, Southeast Asia only gets stronger. The next president of Indonesia will shape the geopolitics of the region. So, will Jakarta grow closer to Beijing or will Indonesia push back against China and get cozy with its allies?